Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use GeoGebra to do statistics calculations. I'm going to show you GeoGebra, or the regular version, and then GeoGebra Classic, and tell you why I like each one of these versions. So first of all, go to the website geogebra.org slash calculator. You'll see that we have a graph on one side and then a place to put in functions on the left. But what we need for our statistics purposes is the table. So over on the left side, you'll see an X with the triple dots. And this X is telling you that this is the X variable. And we're going to create columns over here. They'll kind of appear when we type in our data. And then through the triple dots, that's how we'll do our calculation. So the graph over here, we don't really need right now. So I'm gonna just type in some numbers there we go, six numbers. So a small little data set. And let's say that I want to compute sample statistics or actually population parameters on the set of data. I'll click the triple dots and then the little menu will pop up and I'll choose X statistics. So the X is representing that title X of our data. And then in this nice little pop-up window, which is what I like about the calculator suite of GeoGebra, is it tells you what it is you're calculating, the symbol for it, and then the answer. So we have the sample mean or population mean if your data is a population, although then the symbol would be a mu, just not here. The sum of all the data points adds up to 25. The sum of the squared data points, so square the number first and then add up all of those squared numbers. Here's the total sample standard deviation, population standard deviation, cardinality, which is another way to say sample size. Then the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and then the maximum value. Now, what I have noticed is that this says max X and it's just giving you an extra emphasis that the variable was X. Often you won't see the parentheses with the X in textbooks or maybe in your homework. So just know that this is a little bit unique to GeoGebra. And then with the sample and population standard deviations, again, there's the little X's to emphasize that the variable was X that we computed S and Sigma on. So if I close that and let's say I wanna put in another variable, I can type in some more data here and automatically there's a title given to the data. This is kind of more like hacking the graphing here. So that's why there's a Y1. We can compute Y1 statistics. And then here's all of our column statistics. And you can see that there's the Y1 everywhere because it's referencing the variable Y1. Now, it may not matter what the label of your variable is. So you can do statistics on any column that you like. I did want to go back and show you that now that we have two columns of data, and I'm just going to fill out the other column so we have equal pairs, we can click on X, Y, 1 statistics, and we'll get a lot all at once. So the mean of all of the X's and the other statistics, and then the Y's, and then some combinations of those variables, like the correlation, which won't um, be on our radar until the end of the end of the term. And then all the st statistics down here. Oh, well, doesn't look like it does quartiles. So I guess we'll need the one variable statistics after all. Okay, so what I like about GeoGebra here is that you can get your statistics on a table and it tells you what it is. It gives you the symbols and the statistics, which is awesome. But what this doesn't do well is copying and pasting of data. You literally have to type in all the numbers. I tried just pushing uh, control V or command V and it didn't paste very well. So what I like was the classic version of GeoGebra and I can clear out my data. Now this classic version, it's a little clunky. You can paste your data in from a spreadsheet. So if I go to a spreadsheet and let's copy and paste our data. So select it, command C or control C. Then if I go back to GeoGebra and I didn't mention it before, but geogebra.org slash classic hashtag spreadsheet. 
and I get to this setup where I have a table on the side. It kind of looks like Excel. And then over here, we have some kind of squished windows with some axes and a chart over here, um, mostly because I practiced ahead of time. So this is showing up. So let's select a cell and I'm gonna Velcro paste my data here. And that pastes really nicely. So you get both columns of data. Now, when you wanna compute statistics, you can select your column just by tapping on the A, B, C, D, whatever it is. And then up here in this little histogram icon, you can click on one variable analysis, select that. And then off to the side, you get a graph of your data automatically. So this shows a bar chart and you can have some other options as well. Histogram could be really useful. Uh, box plot, stem and leaf plot, all really useful in intro statistics. To get to the statistics, so the calculations, we wanna come over to the right side where we have this little sigma X and it says show statistics when I hover over it. And then another little box pops up in our window and here are all the symbols of the statistics and then here's the value. So I like this version of GeoGebra because it copies and pastes nicely, especially when you're copying numbers from your homework and you need to paste it in, but the statistics aren't as pretty. So um, once you kind of learn what these symbols are, then you don't necessarily need to have the labels, um, but you know, practice with both and see which one works well for you. But going through the statistics, first of all, we have our sample size or population size, if this is a population for you, the mean, so sample mean or population mean, the third one down, the little O with a little hat, it's lowercase sigma. That's your population standard deviation. So 1.58. The sample standard deviation is 1.8. And then we have the sum of all the X's, the sum of all the squared X's. And then the last five numbers are your five number summary. So min Q1, median or Q2, Q3, and then the max. So I guess another benefit of the classic hashtag spreadsheet version of GeoGebra is that you can make charts. So if you want to have a dot plot of your data, it's really easy to get that graph and then even change how it looks. If we go to histogram, here's my histogram and there's a little slider, which is nice because it'll make the bars narrower or larger. There we go, just a little bit. So you can see how things change. So there you go. I've shown you how to compute statistics and a little bit more using the two different versions of GeoGebra. You're welcome to choose whichever one works best for you. Bye.